Goedemiddag. Zo, so, het spijt me, maar ik moet in uh, Engels spreken. Zo, okay? so, youth, kids, what is your problem? What is wrong with you? Look at this, I'd like to introduce you to uh, a couple of my friends that I work with in the summer, Noah and Kurt. Allegedly the same age. Frankly, I don't believe it. I think Noah's about 45. Um, why don't you come in more standardised packages? I do a lot of work in education, and it's really, you make our lives really difficult because you're different sizes, you're different shapes, you've got different interests, you've got different talents. How on earth? Are we supposed to manage our kind of situation? <laughs> so, I was coming to talk to you, and I said, we'd like you to talk about school at school. We'd like you to talk to the kids. And I said, well, okay, what do kids do? What do you spend most of your time doing? And a lot of your waking hours, you're at school, okay? And we're here in the school today. So I thought, I'll go and I'll find out something about education. Where do you go if you want to find out something? Google. Google, good answer. Where does Google take you? Everywhere. Everywhere? <laughs> but usually it takes you to? Google again. What about Wikipedia? Yeah, you want to know something? Let's go to Wikipedia, right. So, so I go to Wikipedia, I go to the education page, and I start reading. And after about 10 seconds, I start to get a bit bored. So I start looking at the pictures. Let's just see. Let's just have a look at the pictures that are on the Wikipedia education page. Okay, first up. This is looking pretty, pretty good. I like that, you know. Some nice coloured pens, nice big pieces of paper to be creative on. Nice pieces, nice tops. Okay, what do we notice? Huh? Say it again. They're Chinese, it's in China. Well spotted. What's changed? There's a lot of children. They're packed in pretty close. They're all wearing uniforms now, yeah? There are desks. They're looking quite serious. This is Iraq. Okay. What do we notice again? Some more desks. Exercise books. Textbooks. Some, some nice stationery, by the way. Anybody who likes stationery? India. What do we notice? Uniform. Uniforms again. What are the kids doing? They're, walk, they're walking. Do you normally walk like that? No. Is that how you walk down the street? No. Forming an orderly line. Form an orderly line. Wear your uniform. Most out of the I think. Anything else we notice? Uniforms. Uniforms. Face the front. What's at the front? Blackboard. A blackboard. What else is at the front? A teacher. Afghanistan. Uniform. Afghanistan. Um, I think girls and boys are separated. The girls and the boys are separated. It's much easier that way. Girls are more alike, boys are more alike. Yeah? More textbooks. They're looking particularly, they're looking like they're having a good time. That's one thing I thought about that particular photograph. More uniforms, more rows of desks, more teachers at the front, more blackboards. Finally, somewhere in Southeast Asia, we have a group of children working with each other. 
So let's hear it for Southeast Asia. This is what we like. And this is where you're all going. Okay, whether you like it or not, according to Wikipedia, this is where you're heading on your educational journey. Now don't get me wrong, this is Cambridge in England, and this is where I was brought up. It's a very nice town. Um, this is about a thousand years old, and it may not be the best preparation for the rest of your life. Who knows? But according to Wikipedia, this is where you are heading. So three cheers for Cambridge. Right. <laughs> I have a slight problem with this because what I see there is an attempt throughout your school lives to standardise you, okay? To try and make you the same, face the right, same direction, wear the same uniform, copy the same things down from the same textbooks. And I actually think, irritating though it is, it's really inconvenient, but I actually think it's better that we treat you much more like individuals. And we allow you to follow your own interests a bit more, and we allow you to work in ways that suit you. So, I'm going to work at the moment with St John's School in Waterloo, a bit further south in Belgium. And there we're running a week where there's no homework when we get to that. Yeah? Okay? There's no classes. What do we think to that? There's no teaching unless you ask for it. Okay? And there's no grading. Okay? So what are you going to do in a situation like that? Not study. Sorry? Probably not study. Probably not study. <laughs> and after a bit, when you get a bit bored, what do you do? Play around? Yeah? Eventually what happens is, after the kids have stopped studying and after they play around with it, they actually start to do their own work and they start to do it in their own ways. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Scribble School, which is a different way of working. You will notice there are no desks. You will notice that there is no blackboard at the front and no teacher here. These kids are actually recording a lesson. But they're recording it up on the wall, big papers, pens. They're focused and they're engaged. They're not, they're not bored. They're engaged with the topic, they're questioning, but they're also having a good time. Okay? They're able to concentrate for long periods of time, much longer than you would normally if you were just taking normal notes in a normal lesson. And they're also able to express themselves. But they're able to do it whilst they're still studying. So this is actually a lesson on solar energy. Okay? And sustainability. Now we can do this in all sorts of different environments. So I've done this, brought this into P lessons, into dance lessons, geography, maths. This is actually a student who's learning Japanese. The students were really struggling to remember the different Japanese characters because there are hundreds of them. So they had them draw pictures of what the characters remind them of. So this is the letter E, and it's snowy in here. Yeah, so it's a penguin, and they can remember their letters. They've gone from 40% in their tests to 100%. Okay, the next, the, the next um, slide is actually a video. We'll see if it works. It's a, a young lad called Travis. And this was his, um, his hiragana character, the Japanese character, in the drawing that he did. Okay, I told a lie. I wasn't Travis. I was actually some students of Japanese who were creating conversations and sentences using pictures as ways to stimulate what they're, they're learning about and what they're talking about. Now, if I've got this right, because I can't see what the next slide is, um, this is probably going to impress the adults in the room more than it does you guys, but the next video is a 14-year-old boy, and we just done a workshop on some quite complex ideas around politics, food supply, 
And then he went away and he did, did a drawing, and we asked him to explain it to us. Let's hope that I've actually got the right thing. No, I haven't. I'll come back to Justin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So this symbolizes like the burger company or industry. They continue to make the burgers. They continue to make, put some bad stuff in it. And then they get sold to the people. They eat the stuff. They like it. And they're addicted to it. But then after eating tons of it, they get sick or die. The government, government finds out. But then the government probably makes a deal with the company. And they get paid off. So when people think about it, the government knows about the bad stuff happening when they continue just to ignore or not listen. But it continues to be advertised and it's just a cycle. Wow. So the advertising place you need to go and keep your face going, right? Because that's the reason. Because if you stop advertising, people wouldn't come unless they were already addicted to it. Yeah. So, first business. What are you talking about? Yeah. 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 So, I'm doing a postgraduate degree at the moment, which is kind of reasonably high level. And one of the things they say I have to do is I have to understand the ideas and I have to make use of them in my writing. I was a 14 year old boy, frankly doing stuff that's a lot better than I'm doing at the moment on my postgraduate course because I'm really struggling. If we can get you to think like that, we've done our job as educators. And next time someone tells you to stop doodling or stop drawing, remember doodling and drawing is thinking as well. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the day.